Thanks, everybody. So I'm Dr. Albert Telfian. I'm uh, one of the founding partners of the Endoscopic Spine Institute in New York, which I started with Dr. Kanakandla and Dr. Shen, which is uh, the only institute in the United States uh, devoted fully to endoscopic spine surgery. And I'm talking about awake endoscopic spine surgery. And so I'll spend about 20 minutes going over an MRI with my patients about their pathology. Mm -hmm. And it's only until I take this model out that they go, oh, now I understand, right? Mm -hmm. And I find it very useful for communicating with patients. And so, you know, this is surgery done, I call it natural orifice surgery, where we're operating through the foramen to get pathology, really. Most patients don't come in complaining about deformity, they complain about pain and that pain is usually a pinched nerve. And so this is the foramen with the contents removed, and this is Kamben's triangle. And so this is from a, a paper I published on a cadaveric analysis for the uh, basis for why you can do an endoscopic fusion, because this is about a one centimeter space in here you have between the S1 nerve and the L5 nerve in Kamben's triangle. And so this is what the SAP looks like. This is sort of a... Uh, uh, imagine version of what this is like, but there's usually the SAP in here that performs a that's a barrier for in here. So, uh, um, so what I like in transfer aminal surgery is is taking a small plane and trying to land it underneath the bridge without falling into the water. Right, the water is the spinal fluid. Right, the bridge is the SAP, and this is the trick that we need to do. Right, so. Um, there are risks to transframinal surgery, and I don't want us to minimize those. You know, it takes, and we talk about a lot about education. So step by step, uh, this patient has a far lateral L5S1 disc herniation, pinching the foraminal L5 exiting nerve root, and this is what the lateral X-ray I'll use to do targeting, and it's really stereotactic spine surgery, like the guy showed in the lab with a spinal needle entering in the foramen a K wire, a small incision, dilating down to the pathology. You can use crown reamers to perform a foramenotomy and these endoscopic tools, but this is what it looks like, okay? The patient's position prone. Uh, I'm just using loops to close, uh, um, but, and I, I'm talking to the patient throughout the procedure, okay? So my father was a surgeon, right? So when I was six, I wanted to be a fire truck, not a fireman. A fire truck. <laughs> right. So, but because after that, irrigation. right after that, I wanted to be a surgeon like my dad. So, when I was ten, he crushed me, right? Because he said, "I don't think you're tough enough to be a surgeon," right? And that uh, really, I carried that, right? But it turned out, you know, he was absolutely right. I'm a super compassionate person, right? So, awake spine surgery. I do, mostly what I'm doing is very complex pathology. It's scarred in, and so the patient's being awake allows me to communicate with them, to do it safely, right? And so it's this experience, right? And this is, I'm really talking about awake transframinal surgery because this patient is talking with me throughout the procedure, and I tell them what I'm gonna do before the procedure. I tell them again in the pre-op area, and I promise them, I have my hand on their hand and I'm saying, I am not gonna do anything to you without telling you, okay? Count of three, you're gonna feel pinch and burn with the numbing medicine, right? So I've been doing this surgery for 20 years, right? And my goal 20 years ago, this is when you would go to Blockbuster and buy a videotape, not a, a CD or a DVD, right? And so my goal was to turn this into a dental procedure, right? You don't go to the dentist and get put to sleep most of the time, right? And so this is the scope, you know, it's small. Now if I tell the patients, this is very useful, it's the size of a number two pencil, right? And that's gonna go in the foramen and that's the exiting L5 nerve root. I'm gonna take out that disc. This is an extreme lateral L4-5 disc herniation, right? Which would be a difficult case if you did open surgery, but it looks exactly the same, right? That's the L4 nerve root, right? Paracentral lumbar disc herniation, right? You know, you're gonna go in, you're gonna see a big disc. This is a uh, Johns Hopkins uh, uh, surgical employee and go in there and it's removed uh, in the post-op. Um, here, here's a, a patient, this would be you know, great micro disc uh, procedure, but you know the patient, you know, comes to me wants endoscopic spine surgery. Um, you know, there it is in the foramen, and I'll I'll just remove a disc. 
the size of my thumb, right? But I'm doing it awake, right? And the, the patient is going to be able to go back to work the next day. They're not going to have the complications of anesthesia. Uh, so some of the basic landmarks for transfer element of scopic spine surgery, this is an L2-3 disc herniation. You know, the cannula is in the foramen. You know, we're looking at this. I'm going to spin this around, right? And the reason I'm showing this is because for those of you who want to learn this technique, it's a matter of learning needle targeting and understanding the endoscopic visual anatomy, right? What you're looking at here, right? And so where's Waldo, right? When you're going to be in there and you're doing this, you have to be able to identify, like Dr. Kim was saying, you know, the SAP and the pedicle, you know, and the foramen, right? So disc reherniation. This is a patient who had a laminectomy at, at Harvard and, you know, has a disc herniation, right? And this, so this is one of the that is superpowers of endoscopic spine surgery, transforaminal endoscopic spine surgery, because you're going through this virgin territory, right? Here is this terrible disc herniation, and this patient sends me so many referrals, right? So this disc herniation is sitting underneath the S1 nerve root. So I'm going to put a ball probe underneath the S1 nerve root and just break that scar tissue to free up that disc herniation right? And they'll be able to remove this large chunk of disc, right? Cranially and caudally extruded disc herniations, right? So I wrote the first paper in the world, this is from that paper, about doing intracanal surgery, right? Where we're going into the canal to remove these discs, right? And this is just looking at the foramen, right? So caudally extruded disc herniation, there it is behind the body in the spinal canal, Here's a, a cranially extruded L5-S1 disc herniation and a department chairman. Disc herniation above a fusion, right? You know, it's like, of course, the patient um, is a great candidate to have her fusion extended, but she doesn't want any more fusions, right? So this is, this is very, we're talking about patient-centered surgery, right? Foraminal stenosis, this would be a great case for a, a lateral fusion. The foramen's completely occluded. There's the nerve root, there's the disc. I've opened up the foramen, I'll elevate this nerve. And this is, I'm doing this while I'm chatting with the patient, right? This is a foramenotomy below a multi-level fusion. We do this awake, diamond drills, make the foramen. This is the starting foramen. Over here is after I'm done. You see the exiting nerve root, facet cysts. This is from the cover of the journal Neurosurgery I published uh, last year doing this transforaminal surgery. This patient, 94-year-old, World War II veteran, comes in with a foot drop. He's had a laminectomy and has the spacet cyst, right? It's like it's a perfect fusion case. He's 94. This is done awake. This man walks out carrying his cane, right? He's not using it anymore. This is the gift goes to the giver with these kind of surgeries, right? Here's uh, another one. This is a pretty common laminectomy facet cyst. Looks similar. Going in through the foramen. Before, after. This is a Parkinson's patient, right? Parkinson's patients do terrible with general anesthesia. So do this awake, remove the cyst. Spondylolisthesis. This is a former NFL player. This is a, uh, uh, you can see this patient has a stable spondylolisthesis. She's very frail. You can see that foramen's completely occluded. All she really needs is a foramenotomy to take care of that nerve. I'm not destabilizing her. Um, like we said, just remove the ventral portion, the SAP. This patient has a PARS fracture, right? No, the foramen's completely occluded, right? No instability on flexion extension. Great A-lift case screws, right? Patient just has a radiculopathy, right? I'll just go take care of that. But it's awake, very safe. Fusion complications, a lot of what I do. But this patient had a minimally invasive T lift, but has a large disc herniation. Remove the heterotopic bone formation. I actually do quite a bit of that. This is a patient, this is heterotopic bone formation. The canals, the foramen is almost completely occluded by this bone. And this stuff like this is really where you have the margin of benefit from doing it awake because I can really be aggressive. This is just going between screws. Failed laminectomy syndrome is a lot of times failed lateral recess stenosis decompression. Use these tools, reamers, drills, chisels. This is a patient who had a pseudo arthrosis. You can see his peak cage here. 
He's not a candidate for general anesthesia, right? So he flew to me so I could go in, perform a discectomy on the other side with him awake, transforaminally, put in BMP allograph and extipandable titanium cage, right? Take care of his pseudo. Back pain's gone, right? So sometimes you can't do um, uh, general anesthesia on patients. Patient with another pseudo, same thing, peak cage. This time I'll go in and put in an expandable peak cage next to it, just mirroring the, that's one thing, you know, if somebody has a T-lift, there's still room in there. Post-fusion decompression, right? Look at that beautiful lateral mass fusion this guy had in Texas. But his foramen is occluded, right? So I'm going to go in and do a wake foramen anomies. This is trans-SAP technique with a jam sheety needle. Endoscopic foramenotomy. This patient, when you see this, you know, this patient comes in with a foot drop, right? This is her x-ray, and she comes in with a foot drop, right? She's had an L4 burst fracture. She has a cage in there. But if you look at it closely, you can see her L4-5 foramen is occluded over here, right? So this is a lot being like on the bomb squad, right? It's like you're going to go in there. It's very complicated. When they're awake, it gives me that extra level of confidence in what I'm doing, right? So I'm going in there, do my reaming, put my cannula, put the camera in, and there I am. There's the cage, pedicle, SAP. Decompress this, foot drops gone. So I'm going to stop there and uh, ask if anybody has any questions. No questions, thank you.